Destiny 3 is happening. That's the news that we have for you. And according to a leaker who got a bunch of stuff right, we are going to be talking about that today. Now, slight change in format. We did a premiere with my lengthy monologue, but I'm going to give you a quick four minute here. Okay, so the backstory, the what happened, my thoughts on it, as well as a prediction. So Destiny 3 seems to be happening and we have pretty reliable information from somebody who seems to know what's going on. And I'm going to quickly give you a backstory. What happened with this leaker? I'm going to give you my own thoughts on this as well as a prediction very quickly here. Okay, so just the backstory of Destiny. Obviously, Destiny is in a bit of a weird place because you were supposed to have Destiny 3 by now. And many people agree that Destiny 2 continuing was the right decision. Well, that also just was paired with them going independent. So they were no longer going to be under Activision because the contract with Activision was dictating new games at a cadence that Bungie didn't seem to want to do any longer. This led to them then ending up under Sony. And we learned through recent layoffs. We learned through recent situations that the game got into a rough state. Like they weren't sure if they were going to survive and then a lack of interest in the final shape was the concern that not only were these layoffs happening now but there might be more coming in the future so that's sort of the backstory and the runway that leads up to the moment of what just happened with this leaker so the final shape reveal comes and the leaker gets the subclass right and everyone's like wait what how did he know this well allegedly this is all coming from the leaker they have ex-employees that are talking to them and they not only knew that you were going to be getting this subclass in the final shape where you could like mix and match your dark and your light powers also destiny 3 is in Production, According to these ex-employees, it started roughly two years ago. And that's why everybody is suddenly talking about Destiny 3. It's probably in your Twitter feed. It's probably showing up on YouTube because, wow, we have a leaker that seems to really know what's going on. And this is coming. So let me quickly give you my position on this. First and foremost, I do think it's coming. I think that the only real true hope for the franchise is a big and a brand new game. They're going to have to sort of leave behind what they've been doing within the constraints of Destiny 2, needing to put content in a vault and then bring it back out again. And that is related to the engine. Now, the engine always gets into a pretty spicy debate, right? Well, it, it has to be in the Tiger engine. If you're not familiar with that, it's an engine that they've been using for a very, very long time. And you're going to lose the Destiny feel if you leave behind the Tiger engine. I have heard they pulled out the best parts of Tiger, and we're going to end up with some kind of a hybrid engine in the next game. So we'll see whether or not that turns out to be true. That's a rumor from somebody who seemingly has some contacts and people in the know. Now, my other position on this is not only that it's coming, they'll need to reconsider things with the engine, reconsider things with how the game feels, but they're going to have to maintain the MMO and the action balance. I don't think you can just blow up the game and make it enormous like a giant open world MMO. One of the reasons that Destiny feels so good is the mobility and the action and that moment to moment works better in spaces that aren't enormous. Uh, The larger the space, the more your mobility doesn't feel as impactful. The larger the space, the more your guns don't feel as great, as well as your abilities and grenades. So that's kind of my position on it. Let me quickly give you my prediction. I believe that Destiny 2 is entering cruise control. Uh, I also believe that there will be more layoffs. I don't think that the final shape is going to turn the tide enough they certainly got everybody excited and i've always said the destiny community is the happiest after a trailer not in the content not once the content is here so sadly i think going into cruise control will be very visible people will be able to tell that's what's going on even though it's probably going to be considered like the golden age of destiny 2 similar to age of triumph and destiny one and i don't think that's going to affect destiny 3 i think destiny 3 gets built either way because marathon simply isn't big enough as a game for the entire studio to work on it and it also doesn't seem like it has the brightest future right now so destiny 3 is coming and probably in 2027 and destiny 2 will likely then be on cruise control leading all the way to that moment so that's just what i think i'd love to know what you think And I'd love to know what you guys think right now in the live stream. We're trying a little bit of a different format today. Quicker show open where I just give you the high points 
and then we're into the discussion. And if you want the lengthy monologue, that hit as a premiere and an upload. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing for you this morning. I think that is my only concern in doing this, is you're going to be like, what in the world's going on? Why are we getting so many videos all at once? We may schedule it a little bit differently, so maybe keep the live stream uh, unlisted or something so you don't see it, so that you all end up in the premiere. So if you miss the premiere and you were hanging out in this live show kind of waiting for the live show to happen we'll try to adjust that so that doesn't happen by mistake and thank you so much for everybody jumping in so quickly this morning we have our our first member of the day was not somebody gifting a member but somebody picking a member zet uh zet phtv or zeps tv uh you did choose the five dollar tier so that is the gifted tier that's like the introductory tier you're going to want to upgrade uh to the six dollar tier if you want to get into the shows with my wife or if you want to get into um the the writer's room that's the behind the scenes show that we do every day where we plan the shows and we're going to make it easier for you guys to hit the goals the goals have been really difficult to hit because we're always gaining and losing members So attaching a goal to the total member count doesn't seem fair because you're always being so generous, but then your generosity from 30 days ago sort of cuts our legs off, which is just really not fun. It's like, oh, wow, we got great momentum and then we lose like 100 members because 30 days ago you guys gifted 100 members. So we're going to start doing a weekly goal and just ignore the total member count, okay? Focusing on the total member count only really matters when we get up into like the 4000s and maybe we're going to unlock more emotes. Right now we've just been kind of hanging out in the 2 to 3000s, which is fantastic, but the goals are fun cuz you celebrate them and then we do something fun on Friday night. So this week's goal is just 300 members that's the goal okay we're going to gradually make those goals higher every month because the incentives are going to get cooler near the end of the month just as a great way to celebrate and to have something fun for you guys to do so right now all we need for the week is just the 300 members which you guys more i think than have done that most weeks but we don't sense that because we're always focused on that total member count so We will track that at the end of every day. It's very easy because the goal is there and I can just add that uh, in in a room in the Discord. So that's that's a little update for you guys. Also, if you upgrade from a gifted member to a paying $6 member, we're going to start counting that in the goal. So if you can't gift a bunch of members and you don't feel like, oh, I can't contribute to the goal, yes, you can. If you are on a gifted member or you're paying for the $5 membership, bump up to the 6 we'll count that if you bump up from a standard to a vip we'll count that as well we're going to start counting upgrades because those are super important and you can move the line so just a little housekeeping sorry to do all that just wanted people to know what's going on and since we changed the format with the destiny stream we thought it would probably be the best day to do it because a lot of you are going to be here because you love when i talk destiny which is totally understandable now i got to thank some people aunt jemima with 10 months james with 21 months I like the new format. It's very impressive. Thank you. Matt with 38 months. Matt with, uh, that, that's a VIP as well. 28 months from Dodevas. And then I've got some gifted to thank. A five bomb from Dodevas and a five bomb from Hotshot taking us to 11 members already on the day. You guys are crushing it. And if we hit 300, I'll throw out a stretch goal. So the goal for the week is just 300 members. We're not worried about the total member count anymore. So thank you guys already getting us on the way to that. Row Row Raven renewed their membership. Babbling Bike hit 20 months. Great format. Much love. Thank you. And then Jordan Lanham gifts a member as well and gets us to that halfway point of the 25. Every 25, I still get five. So keep in mind, some of you guys can upgrade for literally a dollar and if 25 people do that, I have to give five. I'm going to do that either way because upgrading is extremely helpful. Uh, it's not about the extra dollar. It's about getting more of you into that great content and getting more of you out of that gifted pool because that makes room for more folks. And another one comes in from Joker Quinn. Thank you so much. So now that we got all that out of the way in the first 10 minutes of the show, usually I'd be still doing my monologue right now <laughs> because that's a format shift. Uh, would love to know what you guys think about this subject, particularly the engine. That, to me, is the discussion. I think Destiny 3 is coming. I think Bungie would be foolish to just no longer do anything uh, with Destiny. I know they probably feel a little bit like Gearbox, like they want to do more. They went through this with Halo, right? They don't want to just get stuck in one game for forever. I think that the community can get franchise fatigue, but so can developers. So... But I still think that's their that's their way forward. 
That is absolutely the, their way forward. And Fozimoto with 29 months says, Destiny needs a fresh start to attract new players. Currently, it's impossible to explain this game to newcomers, let alone them figuring it out solo. And Ron M with 18 months says, wondering uh, just how long I've been here, didn't have a clue until now. Was just wondering how long I've been here. Oh, well, there you go, 18 months. Uh, Momo the Cow says, with a lack of content announcement past the three episodes, Sony holding concern on Bungie's costs and operations along with more layoffs, it's so hard to imagine a D3 while the company may not last. Well, here's something you have to remember. They are still significantly larger as a company than they were pre-Sony acquisition. So they were like eight or 900, you know, uh, employees, and then they mushroomed up to like 1,200, and then they, they laid off the 100. So they are actually still, they are, they are actually still bigger, which to me means their cost, their operations, their potential layoffs, that's, that's not meaning like, oh, the company's going to shut down. Does that make sense? Like they're too, I think they're too big for that to be a real possibility. And another five comes in from Dodevas and takes us to 18 members on the day. Thank you guys so, so much. Doubling up this month. That's my man right there. Thank you very much, Dodevas. That's very, very kind. Don't forget, guys, we are now counting upgrades in the member goal because we think that that's a great way to honor you bumping up and saying, hey, I'm going to get out of the gifted pool. So you guys can honestly kind of double dip. If you get a gifted membership, that counts. And then if you upgrade, that counts. So we're counting all of it. We think that that's fair. And we think that that's, you know, a great way for you to see how much we value people jumping in to that uh, to that member pool. Thank you so much for being a VIP Cal for 23 months. Lightly says, my problem with Destiny is that the art style has changed so much over the years. I think if they don't return to the roots a little bit or do something completely new, it'll flop like D2. I, you know, what is interesting is I've actually commentated on that myself. I've looked at some of the art style and some of the trailers, and I'm like, man, that, that game is all over the place like it doesn't look or feel the same way anymore and i i don't necessarily think that that's a problem for your popularity i was gonna try and fix that though i've got some my lights are being crazy today all right a little purple there insomniac black with a five dollar super chat tip real question is are they building wells in the congo but for real will you be playing d3 <laughs> friday night got a little crazy that was fun I would obviously plan to play it, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, we don't know if they're, you know, are they going to let, are they going to let things go? Are we going to get to a point where, you know, people can just kind of move on with their lives? You know, Uh, that's not a question that I can answer. You know, I'd be concerned uh, that they can't recreate the gameplay feel if they switch engines but it seems like it might be necessary the content vaulting is awful for the game i agree with you fat lump another gifted comes in from stone spire takes us to 19 members on the day see i already like the new format because i'm like oh we need 300 members this week for the goal oh and the incentive is madam and i will have to play ghost of tsushima together which is a two controller bit that we do (laughs) you can actually play games on the playstation with two controllers and you're both controlling the same person, it'll be fabulously funny and we'll try to do some duels in Tsushima. It's one of my favorite games. So that's one of the incentives you guys can get uh, every single... um, You can get that every single month. That's one of the things we're going to start doing is let's play one of Lono's favorite games with two controllers with Madam. Yo, what's good, Kirk? Guys, don't forget, Kirk and I are doing a show today as well about Star Wars Outlaws, so don't miss that. That's later. I'm mainly interested to see whether they just try to get initial sales or if they actually build out Destiny 3 in a way that retains all the new and returning players to the new entry. I mean, I don't know how you get new players unless you do something... You'd have to do something tectonic. You'd have to do something significant. If it's just more Destiny, we've seen this with other franchises. The people that have made up their minds about it are like, yeah, I'm good. I've I've seen your game. I've played your game. It's just not my cup of tea. You know, Lono's lights are like the new prismatic subclass. They really are. They're, we're getting a nice combo of it over there. You know, a little half and half. As long as D3 doesn't get rebooted a year before release, it'll be way it'll be a way better place than D1 and D2. 
Uh, Derek says it's a pickle all, and almost too big to fail IP with a successful but bumpy track record eyeballing a presumed third title do the same thing again want to add or change can they get it right I don't know that's always the dilemma if you change too much your core audience is like you didn't stay true to your roots if you don't change enough people are like it's just more of the same and that's literally a high wire above razor blades like if you slip from that you your game fails because People are like, this isn't what we wanted. Stone Spire making it really easy to hit 25 as he sets up a nice dunker. 20 out of 25. Thanks for that single gifted Stone Spire. Seeing if he can tempt somebody to drop a five bomb to slam at home. Has Bungie made a single game that didn't get rebooted before release? Yeah, I was just going to talk about that. What if the plan all along with extending the life of Destiny 2... What if the plan all along was they were finally going to be in the position to build the game that they wanted to build? Like, has that, is that been the plan? Is that why extending D2 was put into place when they put it into place? Does that make sense? Like, they, they, I think they've always felt that they didn't really truly build the destiny that they envisioned because I think the community Cardock Ren slams at home five members of 25 there you go and then I'm going to give my five and what that means is we've already got 30 members down for the goal that makes it so much easier to hit the goal 30 already in the in the in the bucket because I'm going to count mine in the t- well do we count mine in the total we've always counted mine in the total for the for the entire group but I'm not... No, I'll be able to do it. I'll be able to do it. Uh, at the end of every day, I'll just add in the extras from myself. Look at the Fallout show, though. I think it's great because it stays true to the art style in the world while creating a new story within. Destiny's world currently is all over the place. It definitely feels like they mobile gamified it lightly. Like, the last couple times I looked at trailers and art, I'm like, I don't know, that game looks like a freaking mobile game now. Like, bright colors, and it's like, you know, shiny things... I, I, that doesn't mean that the gameplay is bad. It's just the way they're promoting it. I've always felt like recently, especially, I'm like, I don't know what that game is. I remember, you know, the season of the, what was it? The the, the, the seasons where you had like the, what's his name? The Grifter? What's his, is it Drifter? Grifter? I can't remember his name now. The guy for the freaking the, the the game mode that I hated so much and I could impersonate him and I can't even remember his dadgum name. Is it Grifter or Drift? I can't remember. JW with 38 months. Like in the earlier start, brother. Hope all is well with you, man. Appreciate you and all that you do. Thank you so much. And Momo the Cow, thanks for jumping back in as a member. I remember those seasons and the artwork being, yeah, the Grifter. He's a freaking YouTuber. The Drifter. Okay. It makes more sense that he's a Drifter because he drifts through whatever anyways grifter gambit drifter dambit i don't know anymore anyways i haven't played the game in such a long time i remember the art style being sort of like there was this dark foreboding dirty western it i don't know exactly how to explain it but remember the paintings that they had and it was like it looked like we were going to be playing a Western. I remember Forsaken feeling that way. I remember those seasons feeling that way. And Steady Red Gaming jumps in, brand new member, and he picks, or they pick, the VIP. That counts as two members. I'm rolling it up to 27, and now at 50, I'll gift another five. You guys are crushing it today. Yo, what's good, Head Killer? Uh, I wasn't here for the monologue, but it's possible that it could just simply be a third Destiny game, not necessarily a sequel. I was wondering if they're working on a mobile game. Oh, that's a good question. In my opinion, I you'd have to tie it to the overarching game. You couldn't, you couldn't be, and a five bomb comes in from JW and takes us to thirty-two. That's excellent. Here's the thing. You couldn't just say, oh yeah, it's a new game. You've got too much history to leave behind. You have all that lore, all those videos on YouTube, all the people theorizing and the characters to suddenly be like, no, it's just a third game. It has nothing to do with the previous games. 
You missed Season of the Mermaids? We were swimming and we fought bosses on Titan. <laughs> uh, was the monologue just like five minutes? Yes, it was. I also don't know. YouTube was a little goofy with when I started, so it might, the VOD might be messed up. This happens sometimes um, where it doesn't start properly, and like all of a sudden I'm, I'm like, no, it started properly. Yeah. The opening is now going to be about four minutes long. It's just going to be a quick summary of the monologue. The monologue will be an upload. We're making that change. We're going to try it this week. I hope it's not too confusing for you guys. You won't change much of your morning ritual. You'll all pile into a premiere. There's the monologue. That premiere will redirect to the live show. So, seeing some familiar names in chat. Dauntless says, three-year cruise control. That's a long time. Uh, Better be great when released. Yo, good to see you, Zen. Good morning. Miss you, bud. Miss you, too. Uh, I mean, you say that, says Zet, but they are happy to remove a year's worth of time currently. I think they'd be okay with a quick recap or just throwing it out and focusing on something else in D3. Yo, welcome back. Fat Lump is a member. Here's the thing, though. You could even do a time lapse. You could have like a hundred year span of time, but don't people want to bring their guardians with them? Don't I mean I don't even remember the lore behind Guardians. Do, can they? Don't they die and constantly come back? Wasn't there that? What does it mean to be a Guardian? There was that trailer where Zavala kept dying and coming back, dying and coming back. So couldn't they do that? Can't we basically quote unquote die and come back in like a hundred a hundred years or something? You know. Uh, to me, th- that would be a good way to say, yeah, we've we've left behind that era. A bunch of things have happened. Enemies are different. Weapons are different. You know, your powers are different. Would you return to D3 if you could? Like I said, somebody asked me a little bit ago, this game's probably going to come out in 2027. I would hope by then people have just decided to like just move on and just leave me alone. Like that would be my hope. Yeah, of course I would play it. I don't have any interest in playing D2, but D3 in 2027, that's like that's 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 another life. That, that's that's forever from now. Like I don't know. I don't care if they if they're like no you can't. I'd be like, "All right, fine." <laughs> you know, if that's the game people want to play all the way in 2027, okay that you know i can only control what's what i can control and so i would be like all right i'm just i guess i'll just play something else like i've been i've been playing a bunch of different games you know you could do a previously yeah previously on destiny yeah like a flashback in my mind i would think they'd have to do a big time jump because well that's another that's another problem with the time jump though is do you what do you do with the characters you know in many case in many case in many cases i think games like this are appealing because of the characters you know you can't just suddenly not have ikora and Shax and the grifter <laughs> you guys suck you can't suddenly not have those characters, you know? Bank those moats and summon a new character. Like, you... What are you gonna do? Just have all new... I don't know. That might work. It might work to completely reset and have new characters. But I do. I think that's always the risk of trying to continue with a game this long, is people get attached to things, and if those things disappear, then people are gonna be like, well, wait a minute, I don't, this isn't the, you know, hashtag not my destiny is all you're gonna see. Ghostface with 20 months in a VIP, unless there's some earth-shattering resurgence due to the final shape, I don't think it would be financially viable to make D3 red bags coming in hot. Uh, Kirk says, you think Destiny 3 takes that long to release? Won't D2 and the IP languish in the meantime? I think D3 would need to be late next year. I think one of the best things for Destiny would be for it to languish. You have to let it get dark. I think you do. You have to let it get dark. You gotta let people think, well, I'm not playing that game couple of years go by and all of a sudden you drop a trailer and it was like 
oh wait there's a brand new game i think one of the worst things they could do is try to daisy chain destiny 3 to destiny 2 that's one of the worst things they could do now you might not agree with me but i i don't think i honestly think they're better served by going dark for a while and making everybody just basically well, there's not much going on games on cruise control we're getting episodes but that's it no big dlcs no big story beats you know let it let it go cool let it cool down dsb with a brand new member i'm sorry with a renewed member welcome back what did what did stubbles say i I saw jay stubbles in chat like quarters of time the grave maybe our guardian dies before d3 yeah maybe not sure this has been said already but entirely new title for destiny 3 according to their tos you wouldn't be banned off rip and you'd be allowed to play are you going to of course I would. I would give it a shot. I'm like, all right, what are they doing over here? You know, I don't know. Ikora hasn't had Torres as the voice actor in forever. Final shape, merging of subclass light and dark. I think we won't be guardians as we know it. Yeah, remember when I said that we would no longer be... I said we would no longer be guardians of light. We would be guardians of power. Because we started picking up orbs of power instead of orbs of light. And I was like, well, clearly we're going to change. You know, we're going to we're gonna change as guardians. Well, <laughs> as guardians. That's happening with Prismatic. And that's one of the major pieces of the leaks about Destiny 3 is that you would have more of a mix and match system. You wouldn't be you would no longer be like, oh, we are a guardian of light. Be like, no, you're just a guardian. You you would be using any power, any means necessary to do, I mean, I guess that what would be the fight then too? Like, what are you fighting at that point would be the question. You'd need a new big bad. Don't worry, Lono. Once they let go of the upper management and the CEO in 2026, you'll probably let you come back. Oh, I don't know if that's going to happen. We haven't had light level for a bit now. It's been power level. I mean, I kind of called that one. It just, that felt like where we were headed. You can't start powering your light-based supers with orbs of power and not question what's going on. You know, title of your first Destiny 3 stream, Return of the King. No, there's no reason to be that way about it. Stone Spire comes in with a gifted member and takes us all the way to 33. And a five bomb from Sneaky Wolf. So you think they're developing Marathon and D3 at the same time? Yes, I do. I think a smaller team has been working on Marathon for a while. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Benji. Is that Benji that I met through Sheen Eyes Benji? Is that the Benji that's in chat right now? Ben Jesus? Oh, there's a name for you. Lono, you had power level when you were still playing the game. I didn't freaking pay attention to that crap, Sven. I was sitting in orbit. <laughs> I didn't pay attention to any of that nonsense. I was sitting in orbit. Just imagine if my boy got unbanned from purple. And then D3 comes out and doesn't get banned from it immediately. There's going to be a lot of all oh, that. You're talking about another universe, Insomniac Black. <laughs> You're talking about another universe, bro. If that if if that happens, then I believe in the multiverse, and I believe that we've shifted into another universe. If that's happened, like we slip in, which you know that's probably happening all the time right now, anyway. I wonder how Sony feels about Bungie's other games. I think Sony just wants them to be a Destiny machine. Coffee? Oh, I forgot to pull the coffee out. Sorry! I am sorry. I have people in chat acting as my production crew. There you go. Reforge Roast. You know? I remember you calling it on the Orb of Power. It seemed like a pretty sensible switch to me. You know? And I honestly thought there's always going to be a point in time where we become so powerful that wielding both sides is an expression of that power, right? Yeah, that's that was always how I viewed it. I always viewed it as 
we are on a uh, we're on a uh, a trajectory of power that would mean only using light would be seen as inferior be like you're oh you're only using the light power what are you talking about we're so strong now we can wield it all to the point that you become you're not even corruptible like you're so strong you're holding it all in balance that's a true sign of strength the fight would be who could be the most virtuous you'd get in-game loot for your t- hashtags oh my gosh um you don't remember he didn't play the game just sat in the queue that's right i just sat in orbit you know who play why would you play destiny <laughs> why would you play destiny you know, I earned a living not playing Destiny. It was remarkable. It was the it was the absolute best. You know, I showed I showed people the best way to play was by not playing. And you just talk you just talk to your <laughs> remember when <laughs> did I put out a guide somewhere once and I was like, here's the best way to play Gambit. I was like, what you want to do is you want to open up your little, what do they call it? The director. You open up your director here and uh, just don't queue into Gambit. I was like, that's the best way to play Gambit <laughs> or something like that. I forget. I put out, a, I hated Gambit so much. <laughs> I put out a video and I was like, yeah, the best way to play Gambit is to is to not freaking play it. Don't go in there. Yo, kicking it with Timmy B. Welcome back on a VIP. I want apocalyptic horror, not be friendly, love your neighbor dialogue. Um, I, I think that's always a challenge, you know, you, it, it, people want to get into a game and I think it's hard to get into a game if like, are we the baddies? Like, it's funny in some cases. Yo, Stone Spire gifts a member. Thank you so much for doing that. And it goes to Paul. Good to see you, Paul. Lono is like the computer for war games. The only winning is not playing. Yeah, that's exactly correct. That's exactly right. You don't have to worry about not getting a god roll if you just never try. You know, it's the it's the greatest. You miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take, and you miss a hundred percent of the god rolls you don't grind for. <laughs> uh, they ruined Gambit, in my opinion. I loved it when it was prime. And this, that's a five bomb comes in from terminal stupidity and takes us to 39 members on the day. The man himself. And then King Sovereign comes in with 19 months. I believe if the Destiny 3 rumor is true, then Bungie is working on three or four new titles. Marathon, a mobile game may be canceled. The MOBA and then D3. And another one comes in from Stone Spire. He sets up a tantalizing 10 bomb. That was fun to say. 40 out of 50. And then I give five more if we had 50. Somebody's going to be dropping that 10 bomb. Stone Spire is the, is the king right now of the setups, man. He sets up those dunkers. Gambit, whenever I play it, I basically play it as a one-man team. I pick a job and stick to it. I don't care wins or losses as long as I get my bounties and challenges done. That is that is exactly that's exactly everything wrong with Gambit. <laughs> that is everything wrong with Gambit is that people get to the point where they're like, "Oh, f it. I just want the bounties." And they go in and they don't pay attention to they, they don't care if they win, they don't care if they lose. Matchmaking with you has got to be such a treat, you know? People are like, "What's this guy doing?" <laughs> Why is he go? Why is he playing with that weapon? It's like well, I'm working on a bounty, bro. I gotta get ten headshots on Hive with a bow, and they're like, "Oh golly, here we go." After rebuke this gambit slam slander in the stream transition when I come on, you you have absolutely no clue what you're getting yourself into if you think you're gonna defend gambit to me of all people you're 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 in for you're in for a beating that game was 100 <laughs> percent everything wrong with it i get all those moats and my team's just bounty hunting that's what i'm saying bro people <laughs> what one of the best things about destiny was how discombobulated it always was you know we were like oh what's the burn what's the burn in the strikes or or the nightfall or whatever Oh, the burn solo. Okay, cool. Let me go grab my Vanguard bounties. And it was like, get kills with arc weapons. Like, you motherfucker. What? 
The burn is solar and your bounties are arc like that. I oh my gosh. And then you'd go into Gambit and you'd be like, why are people playing? Why are people doing it? Oh, they're working on bounties. Yeah. That was just, that's just great. That's one of the that's one of the t- <laughs> that's one of the tenets of destiny. They're like We've got bounties for you, and they are not synergized with the game at all. <laughs> you're going to play like a bonehead, if you, and you're going to like it. <laughs> it was always so frustrating. Every time. Every time. Lono, I still have three videos of the Rageless Roundtable saved on my hard drive. Why on earth would you do that to yourself? Why would you? Why would you save that? As torn as I've been about the game, after nearly two years of not playing at all, the new stuff this last week has been refreshing. Well, yeah, and I think that's something that a lot of people are coming to realize is that, you know, some of you guys need to take a deep breath, get into a comfortable seated position. You know, this is going to be a guided meditation. And the first thing I want you to do is I want you to picture yourself not playing Destiny. I'm not saying that you won't ever play it again. I, your heart rate's now increasing. I won't tell you that you're not playing it right now. I'm not telling you that you can no longer play it. I just want you to picture yourself not playing Destiny. And then you're on a pathway to healing. You can take breaks from the game. It's you, you, you can do. I believe in you. I know you can do this. And then when you come back, it'll feel fresh. And it'll feel good, and it won't feel like what on what on earth? <laughs> I can't. I can stop playing. Oh my! I didn't get on Reforged by having ho hum lukewarm opinions. Well, yeah, I wouldn't call them lukewarm or ho hum, but I, I don't know if we'd call them intelligent either. You know, I'm not sure what we would call them. They're definitely takes. You know, you definitely have opinions. We can say this. I think objectively. You know, if if. I'll use some lawyer speak. The jury is still out on whether or not the takes are of a level of intelligence that, you know, is worthy of respect. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you were deployed. It was the best way to watch. Download and listen to it while going to the DFAC. I don't know what that is, but cool. With what you said, you think there'll be a time of no content for Destiny? No. No. So what they did with Destiny 1, I don't think that happens in Destiny 2 where they just halt adding content. I don't think that happens until the next game is out. Like I don't that why would you do that if you've got a recyclable this is what they're going to do. All right. And listen, if you guys are enjoying the show, it's great having you here. Anytime I've talked Bungie, a lot of y'all poke your head back in the show, and I appreciate it. It'd be, uh, oh, the dining facility. It'd be wonderful if you guys showed up, you know, more often, because I certainly cover this game and the company every three months, maybe. Maybe. (laughs) So, you know, come back around. We're having a good time. We've got an active Discord. People are playing Helldivers together. Do me a favor. Smash the like button. Take a second. Just take a second right now and go hit that like button. It helps the video. It helps more people find the video. There's probably plenty of people out there that still think that I'm gone for forever. And I've never left. I never stopped streaming and creating. Uh, I took like a week or two off back four years ago. And that was it. That was the break that I took. People don't realize that. And that's okay. Also, if you hit subscribe, that enables you to have me show up in your, you know, your sub feed and your homepage on YouTube. If you click join and you want to become a member, pick the $6 tier. It's the standard membership. $5 is reserved for gifted. It's not a full membership. So pick $6. And anybody at $5, if you upgrade, it's only a dollar to upgrade. If you upgrade, you move the member goal. We're counting upgrades now. Okay. So let me tell you what I think they're going to do. Okay. And my ability to predict what Destiny does is probably not as sharp as it once was. There was a time where I practically wrote their twabs by being like, I think they're going to do this, I think they need to do this, and I think these three things need to be nerfed. And they didn't get that information from me. It was just really easy to see where the game was going. I don't think they like watched my show and they're like, oh, thanks, he's right. I think it's literally... 
a game where if you're paying attention to the patterns and the rhythms, you just know what's going to happen. Yeah, and when I was like, this thing needs to be nerfed, I was like, thanks a lot for getting that nerfed. And I was like, it's just easy, bro. Pay attention. It's what they do. It's just how they operate. They were they got to a place, at least I felt like, it was pretty easy to predict what needed to happen and what was likely to happen. So my ability to predict what Destiny does is probably not as sharp as it once was. But I'm going to take a crack. I think they will use episodes as a rotating door of very familiar things. Very, um, you might call them recycled things. And they will use that as a way to keep the game going. And I'm going to call this the greatest hits. So they've got great content that they can, and they've been doing this for a while. You're like, they've already been doing that. Yeah, you're exactly right. They were seeing how efficiently they could do that and how efficiently the content would be engaged with. It was all an experiment. It's always been an experiment. Okay. Your streams of taking King carries kept me going. Uh, at the crumb bum job I had back in the day. Well, I that's a great name, Chill Collins. I appreciate you being here. Oh, did that guy? Did Benji ever answer? Is w- was the Benji that poked his head in chat? Was that the Benji I met through She Knives? I don't know if he ever replied. Chat's been, been kind of wild and kind of moving. Are you Benji? Are you still here, Benji? Um. Anyways. Anyways. I, that's what I believe. Episodes essentially will be is just a lot of uh is sort of recycling the recycling the content the loot the gear you know all those things um and the reason they're going to do that is that will then be a smaller team they will spend the next couple of years shifting down uh bandwidth and 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 staff for Destiny 2. Now, Kirk a moment ago was basically like, are you sure that Destiny 3 wouldn't come out until, you know, to 2027? He's like, that seems like a really long time from now. We were told and had a pretty, you know, a pretty good, we had it on pretty good authority. Okay. That they had as many people as possible working on Destiny 2 leading up to this moment. Patrick Q gifts a member, takes us to 41. Thank you so much. Nobody took Stone Spire's setup for the 10 bomb. We'll see what happens. Um, so, they'll, they'll, they'll downshift to like a live team almost. Like, they'll basically just be pushing buttons at that point. Like, yep. Yeah, Here's this activity. Here's this loot table. Here's these recycled exotics. Whoop, and then I'll just like trickle into the game. Because what is it? Uh, every episode is three acts. Every act is six weeks. So 18 weeks. Okay. Well, that's just shy of... That's just beyond four months, roughly. Okay, so you're dealing with that happening three times a year, which is essentially lighter, it sounds to me, like lighter seasonal content. No more DLCs. Recycling, that'll be the challenge. I think the community is fed up with playing content they already played, they already paid for, and then now they pay for again. Well, don't misunderstand, Dauntless. This will not be a popular decision, but it's a necessary one. They simply can't just keep giving you more Destiny 2. It's not possible. The company has to move on. They either have to move on to brand new, brand new IP, and Marathon's not that. They're not going to put the whole dadgum studio on Marathon. You're not putting 1,200 people, 1,100 people, whatever the employee count is now. You're not putting over a thousand people on Marathon. Marathon pr- probably is not long for this world anyway, based on what we're hearing. I think that that game is going to struggle. Okay. So, they can't keep giving you Destiny 2. So, this is a necessary decision. That 
They got to downshift. They got. They have to do it. It's 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 absolutely necessary for the survival of the company. This is a cautionary tale to every live service game. Every every game that's aspiring to be a live service game. This is a cautionary tale. You're gonna you run out of railroad eventually, and then what are you gonna do with all those employees? What are you gonna do? They won the live service lottery in many respects. Like they actually did it. They are approximately five months away from their 10 year anniversary. This is the year that they hit 10 years as a live service game. Remarkable. Remarkable. A console based, largely console based, non subscription live service game, 10 years. Yo, E-Man did it with 21 months in a VIP. Much love, man. Excited for today's discussions. Thank you. So, just what do you do at that point? Think about it. From a business perspective, it's like, yeah, we're doing great. Okay, the game's declining in interest and money, but we're still, there's still a very, it's still a lucrative enterprise. According to the leaker, the new subclass Prismatic was ripped from D3. Now, that was something that my producer theorized. He theorized that this was their Hail Mary. They're like, we are absolutely screwed. The final shape is not going to be enough. Grab something from Destiny 3. Let's give them something. And he thinks that's what the delay was about. They delayed it, and they basically ham-fisted this into the game to hopefully get everybody excited. Behemoth with 37 months, man, more than three years and a VIP. 37 months and we're still going with Lono, an amazing community. Love your shows. Thank you. Destiny 3 would kill the game, honestly. I wouldn't mind if they rebranded it to just Destiny and made a new game with all the past content and the new content. Well, you can't just name it Destiny. You can't. That is absolutely confusing. That's what the first game was called. You would have you gotta put a number on there. Everybody always disagreed with me on this. Every time this topic came up, maybe not everybody, a lot of people disagreed with me. I was like, no, you need the number. It needs to be like crystal clear. This is a brand new game. And the number three answers all those questions. And a 10 bomb comes in from Behemoth and takes us to 51. That's Agents of Chaos rolling us past 50. And I now owe you guys five more. We are changing the way the goals work. You are no longer trying to hit member goals with the total member count. That's ridiculous because we're always losing members from 30 days ago. Now there's just a weekly total goal, which will be much easier to hit. The goal for this week is 300. You guys have already taken a chunk out of that. You guys are crushing it. Thank you very much. And there's the five that I owe. Hear me out. Final shape merging. What if the new title isn't called Destiny at all? No. No. Final shape is with reference to the Guardians. It's with reference to the end of the Light Dark Saga. You will change in this DLC. And if the rumor is true that they ripped Prismatic from Destiny 3, you know where they're going. You already know. You're ascending beyond being a guardian of light. You're going to be some other higher being. Same with new enemies. They made new enemies and subclasses in this short amount of time. No way. They pulled it from D3 in desperation. Yeah, Ganks is in the members only Discord, which, by the way, a great reason to become a member. Like, if you miss the golden days where we all hung out and ran raids in our Discord, our Discord's still going. You got to be a member to get in there. Uh, pick the $6 tier so that you can also get into the writer's room. We do a behind the scenes stream every day where you see how the sausage is made. Are you happy, Zubair? I didn't say bread. Uh, and you get like basically you see how a show is developed how a monologue is developed how we make decisions that's what that membership is getting you I don't know what prismatic is been away for a while so prismatic is the ability for you to use light and dark abilities at the same time like mix and match your subclass so the final shape what you're becoming is more than you've been up to this point. That's the runway for Destiny 3. Ganks could be correct. They could have literally pulled enemies from the new game and tossed them in because they're like, we have to throw everything at this or we're in financial trouble. 
that that that's a good theory. That's a good theory. I have a really hard time believing they were able to do that in the amount of time that they they they've been working because stuff built for D3 would be in okay, so basically I'm believe let me give you my presumption in here cuz my presumption's based on an assumption, so this isn't exactly fair, but I'm going to argue it anyway. My presumption and and assumption is that Destiny 3 would be in a new version of the engine or at the very least some hybrid engine. I'm hearing they've like ripped out the best parts of Tiger. So that would mean you can't just like grab stuff from the new game and slam it into Destiny 2. That wouldn't be easy to do. Maybe there are no subclasses in the next title. That's exactly what the leaker has indicated, Dauntless. You're, 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 You're basically catching up right now. You're a little behind, and you're catching up because you spent time away from the community and the leaks. You're now you're all caught up. Yeah, that's it. That's it, brother. No more subclasses. You're a guardian. That'll feel more RPG based. You know, a little bit more classic RPG. Like you're just a guardian. You're a warlock, and that determines like abilities and powers and stuff. But you're no longer like picking between different subclasses. Easy HT Tech with the VIP. Welcome back. A lot of people seem to think Final Shape class stuff was yanked from a future title. That's exactly what has been theorized a couple times today, yes. That they got desperate and they were like, we're in trouble. We got to pull stuff from the new game and throw it in. By the way, huge turnout today. Not surprising at all. Lono's talking Destiny. Make sure you guys have smashed that like button. There's over 700 of you here. Let's set our sights on four hundred uh likes that would be amazing um i have all these people there i think they must be bots that are scouring like they keep using my old business email to be like we can get you leads lead i don't need leads what are you doing big juicer with 21 months i just hopped back into destiny 2 after a hiatus and i got sucked back into the grind today is bringing back all the feels props on you for doing this yeah i wasn't sure i wanted to do this show but i feel good about it i'm very i'm very present right now i'm like i feel at peace about stuff you know i feel good if i never touch the game or franchise ever again feel good you know if the third game comes out and we get to we get to cover it and play it i feel good about that too like we weren't i wasn't sure about doing this but you guys are making it feel good, and I just mentally am fine with it. Off topic, but what did I miss? One of your channels is Helldivers named now? Yeah. Yeah, the big channel is just all about Helldivers 2 updates because that game's going to be around for a really long time, and I really like covering it. But if I take a variety channel and I lean too much into one game, it's really, really bad. Yeah, I couldn't suddenly be doing... The amount of Helldivers updates and shorts and videos I'm doing over there, if I did that here, it would be really bad for the channel. So that's why we did that. If Final Shape wasn't brushing up against Elden Ring, I might check it out. Second time they've done this, Witch Queen launched next to Elden Ring as well. Yeah, that's that's going to be... That's tough, man. That's tough, because Elden Ring pulls with marketing and, and public's attention, for sure. They're not related games, but with respect to, like, the gaming world paying attention to you, Elden Ring pulls, I mean, Gemini. What a what a big gargantuan title with respect to, like, top of mind awareness. So I don't know. I, I don't... I think Destiny... I think they're going to lay more people off. I do. Which is unfortunate because it's the leadership that needs to go. It's the, it's the executives in the C-suite. You got to get them out of there. You're going to lose talent, and that's wo- that's worse for the company. You got to get the big dogs out. They're bad. They're bad for the company. They're toxic. Alex with 19 months. Lono and Destiny. I'm here for it. Thank you so much, Alex. We want you to come back to Destiny just so we can chat about it. I know how much it used to mean to you. Well, I mean, in some ways, it still is meaningful to me, you know? I have t-shirts up in my closet still of the, of the raids. I can't bring myself to get rid of them. I have raid jackets. Yeah. 
pulled an all-nighter to beat Witch Queen Legendary Campaign just so I could play Elden Ring. What a night. Will you be playing D3 if it comes out? I would like to. Yeah, my son asks about the game every now and again. The last time I played the game was with him on a Saturday. We were running... We were running Bounties and Lost Sectors on the Cosmodrome. That was the last time I was able to play. Sounds like I need to go catch up uh, there too then. Love the game so far uh, that I built a decent PC for the first time. Oh, it's such a fun game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally caught a live stream. What's good, Nigel? Love your content. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. If you guys like the content, man, easy ways to show appreciation is the like button, the subscribe button, the bell button, and we really are looking for people to join at the $6. And if you're on a gifted right now, you can upgrade and you can move the goal. We're going to count upgrades now. So already a great day. I've already gifted 10 members in response to what you guys have done. You still have the screenshots of all the times I carried you to Flawless. Um, I don't think I screenshotted any of that. No. <laughs> I don't I don't think they I don't think I ever screenshot any of that. If Destiny 3 comes out, they'll just reuse content that we already paid for from D1 and 2. Honestly, just a universe game with all the previous content. Now, here's why I don't believe that. Okay. Here's why I don't believe that. The financial risk involved in doing that would be immense. It would be immense because you basically tasking your staff to create what is essentially a bunch of, you know, recycled content. Terminal stupidity with a five bomb bumps the line again. You would... I think everybody would be immediately turned off to that because they've already been doing that in Destiny 2. How many raids have they brought back? I don't know. I haven't touched the game in over three years, so I don't know. But I know they brought back a couple of them. So you 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 do that in the third game and people are going to be like, are you freaking kidding me? Th- that would be a disaster. That would be a disaster. Bungie has done some clueless things before. That would be one for the books to say, here's Destiny 3. It's basically Destiny 1 and 2 content all over again. The financial risk involved there would be immense. Sadiqwa pushing those coffee emojis did you order some coffee if you guys missed the coffee it's back the light and the dark roast it's amazing if you remember those days there's no doubt they'll recycle stuff in tough spots it's what they do but they have to operate to a bit of a different standard than they have in the past with Sony in the picture King Salty with a 5 spot says I agree with taking a break missed too many other games because I felt compelled to grind new seasons and farm weapons that I already have. They never brought uh, All But Wrath is back. I see you, Bungie. I see you. <laughs> they, <laughs> they truly, they truly hate me. <laughs> They're like, <laughs> That's the, it's the best raid. It's the best raid. I see you. I see you, Bungie. I get it. I get it. <laughs> and I take it personally. I do. I take that personally. I take that more personally than the ban. I do. <laughs> the fact that they won't bring Wrath back. That's good. They hate Siva. <laughs> Oh, man. They're saving the best raid for Final Shape. Yeah, maybe it comes back with Final Shape, dude. That's going to be great. Oh, man. They try to forget Rise of Iron happened. Why do you think that is? Are you th- Have you gotten that vibe from them? Or, I mean, have people said that, like ex-employees? Why are you saying that? Why would they want to forget that Rise of Iron ever happened? Did it, did it break lore or something? 
I don't know. <laughs> Bringing Wrath back would be weird. How do you deal with the fact it's exotic? It's an exotic that we can get from an exotic mission, if not from the monuments. Oh, well, you'd have to put a different version of it in there, dude. I swear, if that is that the reason it's petty? No, 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 no. That's not the reason. I'm being stupid, dude. <laughs> Although... <laughs> I don't know, maybe. <laughs> exactly. They bring content back regardless. They literally vaulted paid DLC because of the story. One giant game like WoW with previous content on with graphical updates would keep the game alive. Yo, Dead Rot jumping back in as a VIP. Thank you so much. It doesn't fit. They said that they didn't want to deal with the technical aspect of bringing Siva back into the game. Aww. <laughs> uh, uh, I've, oh, that's too bad you know that's, that honestly is too bad it was awesome this is the best some of the best looking weapons some of the best looking armor this is good stuff man they actually addressed the idea of unvaulting a raid whose exotic is black and make a new exotic for it Oh, if the raids exotic is back, they would make a new one for it. Right, right, right. Sadiqwa, thank you so much for gifting a member taking us to 57 out of 75. The daily palindrome on the goal. Mm. I think the problem is starting to be the install size 2. D2 is a massive game. Uh, and to keep adding content to it without removing old content would make it a 250 gig install. So, it's, oh, size so fast. Um, yeah, I mean that's always going to be an issue when you don't when you don't run dedicated servers. You know, I think dedicated servers could help with some of that. You know, when you go when you're going to a planet and it's not literally on your rig on you on your console. You know. Make content optionally installable. I mean, that's a dadgum nightmare, bro. No. Uh-uh. Darth Nihilus with a gifted member. Thank you so, so much. Taking us to 58 members on the day. Destiny 3 will kill the game. I'm like 80% sure. I mean, I don't know why you're that confident. I mean, I, I can't tell you that it won't. I can tell you that I, I don't think that it will. I think that... If they take their time and it lands in 2027, th- that's five years of development with 10 years of intelligence and data. Like that to me is the recipe for a comeback story. The only question I have is. Is that what they want to do? Like, if these rumors are true, I believe that they are. are, are, are is there heart in it? Like, are you, you guys just did Destiny for 10 years. You want to sign up for another 10? Now, they might be saying that that's their only choice. See the tall neck replica? Oh, that's the... um. That's the Lego. Yeah, these are all that's all that's all my Legos that I built with my kids. Yeah. The regular Nintendo TV, Piranha Plant, TIE Fighter X Wing, Tall Neck, all of the busts. I just don't have the Dadgum TIE Fighter helmet bust, like the best one. Um Millennium Falcon, Yoda, Spidey. It depends on the version of Bungie that makes Destiny 3. If it's a Bungie of like the last five to six years, we have problems. If we get old school Bungie D3, game on. How are you going to get old school Bungie? How? Do you think any of those people want to come back and work on Destiny? They've all moved on. You didn't know it was a Lego? Yeah, I don't know if you can buy models of the tall neck. I that's that's the only one I know. Can you afford shelves or a bookshelf? I'm supposed to buy shelves. I just I'm bad about that kind of stuff because I don't care. <laughs> Cause I know if I buy it, they'll sit in the box for three months, you know, and then I'll finally come in here and try and do it one day and I'll get angry because something won't work right, you know.
they cooked for this latest update, I trust them still. I mean, I don't know if I'd ever use the word trust. (laughs) I don't know if I'd ever use the word trust when it comes to them. But I could say I'm confident in the studio's abilities. I think they have a lot of talent. Um, I think they've got tremendous insight into how to do live service. So I'm confident that th- they can pull it off. I, But again, I also think that that the final shape isn't going to do well enough. If it involves a screwdriver, Lono's out. Yeah. Like if my kids have a toy with batteries and I have to go get like a tiny screwdriver, I'm just instantly annoyed. I'm like, I didn't sign up for this technical level of expertise, you know? Yeah, this this isn't this. I don't have a degree in in this technology, you know. <laughs> if the people who put Cloud Striders in the game have leadership roles at D three, the game's in big trouble. I don't even know what that is. What's a Cloud Strider? They did cook, but a lot of it's playing on nostalgia and leaning into power creep. Well, if there are two things that the Destiny community responds pretty strongly to, it's power and nostalgia. So they're making the cheeseburger that you guys like to order. Quit kidding yourself. All right? Have a little bit of self-awareness. They're they're literally going to the kitchen and they're making the favorite recipe. They're like, give them a ton of power and give them that GD nostalgia. Like, that's what they're doing. They There wasn't another play. There was not another playbook there to do. Cloud Striders were from the latest expansion. They were really lame. What? What in the world is it? It's a faction? So, it's a faction like Dead Orbit? It's the ugliest thing to come out of Bungie since the flood. <laughs> come on. It's a faction? So you got New Monarchy, Future War Cult, Dead Orbit, and Cloud Striders? Y'all are messing with me. You're pulling my leg. They're the equivalent of Jar Jar Binks. Let me just put a picture in the Discord. What the? F- what is that? What's happening there? What's he wearing? What are... What is going on? Why is he wearing that? He looks like he'd be like in... an adult bar in Cyberpunk or something and like bringing drinks to your table. They were a cool concept but poorly executed. And you guys are really passionate about this. The chat is buzzing. Uh, we've, We've touched a nerve... (laughs) We have, we have touched a nerve. <laughs> I'll tell you. You want to know about Cloud Striders? Oh, no, I'll tell you about Cloud Striders. <laughs> I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> I'm like, what the? F- what are y'all talking about? Oh, boy. It's the... Oh, no, they didn't. Oh, golly. Yeah, that's that's never a good idea. They moderned, they modern dayed their game, huh? That's always fun in a fantasy realm, you know? That's the best. That's the best. <laughs> There's nothing like booting up a science fiction game or a fantasy game and getting modern day. <laughs> no, that's the best. It's not immersion breaking at all. <laughs> anyway, I don't have any interest in talking about that, dude. <laughs> Somebody should have warned me. Lono, listen to me, okay? You're going to be talking Destiny. Don't mention... No, no, no. You can mention the ban. No, yeah, that's... No, yeah, you can mention that. No, that's fine. Yeah, just don't mention Cloud Striders, okay? <laughs> Ugh, it'll get dark. It'll get dark real fast. <laughs> 
Taylor with 24 months. Hard not to feel uh, that way when one of them blows themselves up like four missions into the campaign when it could have been avoided. I don't know what you're talking about. They blow themselves up four, four minutes into a mission. Oh, Hollow Knight Silk Song got raided in Australia. It's coming! It's coming, chat! They're gonna come for you? Oh no. <laughs> what will I do? A lot of, lot of people have tried that and, and continue to try that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh no. The only thing I need to know about Destiny 3 is, what is the strike burn, and will it match the daily bounties? Yeah, I brought that up a little while ago, Hilly. <laughs> uh, Lono would have had a field day with how bad narratively Lightfall was. Amanda Holiday died. Why'd they, why'd they kill our, why'd they kill our girl? What'd she do? Why would she, why would she leave the hangar? You know? She's hanging out over there. Single gifted comes in from my man Stone Spire. Thank you so much. Taking us to 59. This guy just bumping the line of members all day. This made me laugh controllably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That was pretty good. They were bored. So they just were like, see you later. Someone had to die. Well, why would they pick her? You know, why wouldn't they just get rid of like a sweeper bot or something? Some, you know, somebody inconsequential. Get rid of the freaking dude with the ingrams, you know? Get get him out of the tower <laughs> for one. <laughs> uh, when you whisper to the void, does it whisper back? Just get rid of him. He's garbage anyway. Giving us blues out of purples. If you guys can remember that, he deserves it. He wanted to join the others on the mission and she went boom. The writing of that expansion was as bad as The Last Jedi. <laughs> well, that's a pretty strong condemnation. <laughs> Uh, more. A man that died to give Aldrin a redemption story since they became lovers? Huh? I thought Amanda liked Sloan. When did that... How did... What? Am I misremembering? What? Didn't Amanda Holiday like... Weren't her and Sloan like an item? Or heavily hinted at it, them being an item. Oh, wow. They they straight up just killed her. Like, you see it happen. She's standing there. Man that died pretty much when Lance Riddick did, and the dialogue that week was all death. Very eerie and discomforting. Hmm. Not lovers, but they were really close. He liked her. They weren't a thing. I was going to say, Flo turned into a Taken. You guys are freaking just making stuff up now because I haven't been able to play the game. This sounds like a dadgum soap opera. No, yeah, Sloan got turned into a Taken. Yeah, she's on Titan. I thought her and Amanda Holiday liked each other. Crow liked Holiday. That's it. Crow and Holiday were never shipped. Okay. Sloan is in love with a monster now. What the frick? Why is Sloan half taken? What'd she do? Did she step into some of that black stuff and it just like got stuck to her legs? I told y'all we should never, ever go near that stuff. Remember in the ships, all those taken holes in the hull of the ship? 
Looks like she got a little too close. Connected to a worm god? Why would they do that with Sloane of all characters? Thought Holiday and Cade were a thing? Isn't that in the lore? I don't think so. Sloane is back and his part taken. What the F's going on over there in that game? <laughs> it, so- it sounds like a freaking soap opera, man. You know, we went from watching the Taken King, which is the best name for a DLC ever, because it's a double entendre. He is the Taken King, and then he becomes the Taken King. Just poetry. Beautiful. Dude's floating around. Daddy Oryx, he will always be Destiny's daddy. Okay? We go from that, all the music, oh my gosh, when he takes himself, gee, many freaking Christmas. We go from that to, to everything you guys just said. Another single gift that comes in from Stone Spire takes us to 60 members on the day. I remember theorizing about like time travel and you know, we would repower the Dreadnought and use Oryx's weapon against the Triangle ships because it was the only thing strong enough to take out a fleet of ships of that magnitude. And the stuff you guys are talking about, I don't, what in the, did the writing team quit? Eris became the most powerful hive god to ever live. For a moment, but in that moment, she severed Zivu Arath from her throne world permanently. So if she dies now, she's permanent deado. Okay, that at least sounds pretty good still. At least they're doing some cool stuff with Eryx. Er, er, Eris, not Eryx. I read Oryx in chat as I said Eris. Get your rock off my map. <laughs> That was so good. She like almost hisses at him. A 10 spot from a man Yixels. If D3 really is a thing, then Bungie have a hard task ahead of them is the amount of content that would need to be available at launch to keep people around would be a lot. Yeah, so here's the thing that I've always said about Destiny, but I've also said this about live service in general sorry I had to stretch and I just talked right through it you know I just powered through I always said this about destiny and I also always said this about live service games that the technology doesn't presently exist that would enable them to create enough content and continue to create enough content to satiate the most hardcore players. I don't think that it is possible. Okay? It's not. I don't know if the technology exists yet. I think in in about 20 years, we will have technology that is more sophisticated with generative AI and you know engines that are more agile and that's when I think you'll see a live service game that is an actual living world where you're playing and then after a month or two they just completely add this whole new you know, village, island, city, planet, whatever is the, you know, the context of the game. We're probably about 20 years away from that. That, that, that. The technology isn't sophisticated enough right now with procedural generation and generative AI. It's not sophisticated enough yet, and it won't be for a long time. It's going to take a long, long time. I don't want to wait that long. Give me now. Well, what I'm saying to you is then is that Destiny 3 would likely be a similar cadence to 
what what they mastered in D2, like when I think they probably hit their best cadence, but at the time, they had High Moon Studios and they had Vicarious Visions helping them. Well, since they know the bandwidth requirements to be that good with cadence and seasons and DLCs, I think they can get there. What they needed, though, is they needed a proper development window to to build it. Because if you really think about it, Destiny 1 launched in 2014, and a year later basically saved its own life with the Taken King DLC, which, because that was so impressive, this has always been my theory, that's why they put Luke Smith in charge of Destiny 2. And at that point in time, they rebooted Destiny 2. Well, that's 2015. Destiny 2 came out two years later. That's not enough time. That is not enough time. If they were to build a real true sequel and take like five years to build it, then I believe that they could have a substantive launch and then they could match the cadence of delivery that they need with a season every so many months and an annual DLC. I think they could do it. I think they need a better engine. And if what I've heard is correct, that they like rip the best parts of Tiger out and they've got some kind of hybrid engine, they could do it. They could get content out fast enough, have teams tasked with seasons, larger teams tasked with the DLCs. You know, they're the they're 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 well versed in parallel development to maintain their game. They're well versed in it. So and and they they've got right now if they are if they're two years in, okay, they're two years into building Destiny three. They have a decade, a decade of player behavior, content rhythms, the highs, the lows, the pitfalls, the successes. They they literally are, and this is why everybody was like, why did Sony v- let Bungie cancel factions? It's like because they know better than anybody what it takes to survive the gauntlet of a live service game. So, they know better than anybody. They have all of that in their back pocket, and if they're only two years into devving D3, and they've got another two to three years to build it, I don't know, man. I have a lot of confidence in that working. I do. Now, the question would be, The question would be, does the community and the public support it enough? You know? That's a fire shirt. Where'd you get that? We work with Into the AM, and this is one of the shirts they sent me. Uh, Use code LONO at IntoTheAM.com or go to IntoTheAM.com slash LONO, and that does support me, and then you get a nice discount. Come back to Destiny, please. It's not up to me, bro. (laughs) What are you talking about? What do you think about the fact that they're exploring porting the game to Unreal 5 and bring over what they can from Tiger? If, If, have you heard that Nitro? I heard something like that. I heard something of, of that effect that they, they ripped the best parts out of Tiger and they're going to have like some kind of like a custom build thing. Just picked up four shirts. They have a sale on graphic tees right now. Nice. Anytime they're having a sale at into the AM, you can stack my code on top. They sent me some pants. They're called all day pants. I think, Oh my gosh, they're so comfortable. I'm going to have to wear them one day on stream. They're, they're, they're about as comfortable as sweatpants, and they're, they look like dress pants. They're awesome. SNTR is banned. Reforge isn't. <laughs> no, that's... Uh, that wasn't... I don't, bleh, the name of the account. Bummer had to pause. Had to do grown-up work. Did I miss anything important in the last 25 minutes? Oh, I have no idea. We've talked about a lot. You heard that long ago. It was around the time the IGN article was about the layoffs. Okay. (laughs) We're reforged. Right. 
They're doing up to 70% off right now. I still have unopened shirts from my last purchase. Woo, settle down, Fuzzy. Lona's going to finally wear pants during the stream. I wear pants during the stream? Wait. The camera angle literally shifts so you can see. It wouldn't let you stack codes? No, you can't stack codes. You can stack my code on top of a sale. Have you tried logging in? Yeah, we checked it just a couple of days ago. I have like 181,000 days left on my Steam ban. <laughs> that's legitimate, right? That's, le- that's legitimate. That's, that's That really tells you... <laughs> That's, that's a legitimate ban. Lono has the same Puma sweats he always wears? No. I mean, these are Puma, but a lot of the days it's Adidas. I switch, I've got a couple Adidas, a couple of Pumas I switch between. And now I've got some Into the AM pants that I can, uh, that I can wear. Yo, Skyler with 11 months. Have you considered not playing D3 for content and just enjoying the game privately to avoid a ban? I mean, I could right now play Destiny privately if I wanted. Th- that wouldn't be difficult. Um, <clears throat> it wouldn't be. So if that were to happen with Destiny 3, and I I probably wouldn't want to play privately. I'd be like, all right, cool. <laughs> been seven years and we're still playing this game okay like i would just move on and play other things you know what i mean like <clears throat> we all know lona's been playing no i haven't i have not touched the game since what was that february of 2021 how many years is 181,000 days 495 calendar years yeah they hit me with the 500 year ban they hit me with the 500 year ban I'm gonna gonna freeze myself in cryo and I'll come back in 500 years and be like it's my time now (laughs) it's my time how much trouble would you get if you made a new account and stream D2 um, I don't know. YouTube doesn't really like to play around. So, streaming yourself doing ban evasion is probably a really dumb idea. You know, rebuilt everything over the last three years. Let me just put all that in the hands of, uh, you know, of people <laughs> that would be like, an email away from hurting me significantly so no we just wouldn't do that you look pretty good for 42 you could probably make it to 642 if you eat kale and stuff <laughs> I think I'd get to like a hundred years old and be like nah I'm good bro I don't I don't want to I don't want to make it another another 500 on top By the time your band left, the traveler might actually be here IRL. For real. Yeah. They get you on ban evasion, but how much do they still care? Um. I don't know. <laughs> why would I? Why, I'm not rolling the dice on that. I don't need to play the game. We don't really even play games that much on this channel. Like, we cover. Um. Hellblade 2. <clears throat> I'm sorry, not Hellblade 2. Helldivers. Uh, we play Helldivers. I'm sorry, we cover Helldivers 2, but lately when we play it, it's it seems like it's more worth of our time to just not. <clears throat> so, like, there's not really a reason for me to be like, let's fire up Destiny 2 and start making content. You know what I'm saying? I feel comfortable like, mentally and you know, emotionally, like I'm to a place now where I can cover the game and I'm just like, I'm, I'm just good to talk about it. 
I don't need to play it to be like, well, it, this is from a distance, what it looks like they're doing, you know, scaling down cruise control, hearing rumors about D3 coming, like, I can enjoy that conversation and then move on and talk about other things. Like, I'm doing a second show in an hour uh, with Kirk about Star Wars Outlaws and why all of a sudden the game is getting massive amounts of hate. The first trailer, you know, that they released last year in the summer was highly praised and everybody was, you know, exciting. I'm sorry, everybody was excited. So, have you watched at least the vid docs? No. No. I don't have that level of interest in the game at all. You know? I I stopped playing. I appealed it twice and was never given an answer because it's illegitimate. And then we moved to variety coverage. And we moved to this channel in September of 2021 because I had a 48,000 sub channel, roughly. We were nearing 50,000 subscribers that had five years of content on it on one game. So we moved on, man. You know, as best we could. Pass your band down to the family until one of your descendants is able to play. (laughs) My great, 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 great grandchild will be like, I have to do this for grandpappy. You know, (laughs) they have like a picture of me over the mantle. (laughs) Remember me. (laughs) They would need, they would need like, Sometime, how there wouldn't even would there even be a playable version of the game by then? <laughs> oh, that's good. Logos achieved something uh, with Reforge Gaming that many streamers never accomplished, which is true variety content. I mean, it it, it is freaking hard. You know, it's really hard do one show about you know xbox and i'll get called a grifter and a hater and then i'll spend two weeks not talking about them doing variety you know it's tough really tough to survive off of all the xbox hate you know (laughs) great grand pappy lono that's right (laughs) it wouldn't be a pick of you it would be a pick of your guardian (laughs) oh my god in 500 years, Steam's still around, you know? They're the only platform. All the other platforms have fallen away. Sloan was thrown down an elevator shaft just to secretly survive after being turned into a Taken. Ow. That's what they did to her character? Why did she fall down an ele- elevator shaft? What was she doing? <clears throat> That that doesn't even make any sense. That sounds like something out of a comedy movie. Mm. Mm -mm. Say no to aging. Matt Anagi says, hey, chat, don't forget to smash the like button. I can't talk. Help out, Lono. Yeah, yeah. Excellent job on the like button today, guys. Over 400 likes. Excellent job on the gifted members. 60 already. I've done my two gifted. I've, I've, I'm sorry, I've gifted 10. Uh, I've done it twice now for the five each time. And we're making it a lot easier to hit the goals. This this week, we're doing a 300 member goal. You do not have to try to hit like 2,500 total members. Like we've just decided that was just not. That worked when we always had momentum every month and now that we've settled into more predictable rhythm it just doesn't work so we thought it would be more fair to you guys to not do that it's like hey we need to hit 2500 this week and everything you did last week we've lost a bunch of it like because every 30 days so we're making a lot easier I was out for good once a crow got amnesia and became a guardian thus started working with the vanguard after killing Cade in cold blood oh I actually loved that I have, I thought that was awesome. I he was such a good character. He was too good. He was too good to leave dead. And to and to and to have him turn kind of like 
you know, brooding and like emo. I liked it. I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. <clears throat> Banshee has made moves with ADA1 unlocking sunset weapons. Huh? You're definitely my favorite Destiny streamer. No one else plays the same or explains the game in the same way. Yeah, well, you know, that's just the way uh, things go. Did your account was banned? No, it actually wasn't. It wasn't my account. I can still go to Bungie.net. Um, all of my guardians are still there. I can interact with the website. I can interact with the forums. It was this really weird. It was a Steam dev ban, and because of crossplay, it affected I, every platform. I'm sorry, cross save, not cross play. Because of cross save, all my accounts were linked. So if I try to disable cross save, I can't. Uh, you can't delete your your account or your profile. That's not even a possibility, which is kind of weird. Um, it's just kind of sitting there. So. Pro didn't kill Cade. Well, Aldrin did. I mean, what what difference does it make? I mean, I, I agree with you. The way the way that lore works, he comes back and he's different, which so are we. Like according to the lore, why were you banned? I have no idea. I was never told. They According to the lore, Guardians, that one video where Zavala keeps getting killed and he keeps coming back. How do you know your Guardian was some some saint in the past? When you get woken up at the beginning of Destiny 1, you've been dead for a long time. We have no idea the kind of lives we lived prior to, to doing what we feel is like the righteous path and being a Guardian of Light. He knows now. Well, yes, he does because he's been told, but like he didn't wake up and he was like, you know what? I'm going to do a different, I'm going to have a different, you know, approach to life this time around. I'm going to try to be the good guy. He comes back and he's, he's different. It's like a reset. He got all his memories back from Sabathun. So he knows what he did. Oh, that makes him more compelling as a character now. Cause now he doesn't get to come back clean slate. He has to live with all of that rattling around in his head. That's, that makes him for a, that makes a compelling character. I like that storyline. When he sits up and he takes that breath, you're like, oh, this is sick. Like That was, to me, one of the better eras of storytelling. I loved when we were going into the pyramid ship and getting like a story little beat every week. I thought that was great. I thought it was an excellent way to tell story and to get capital out of a storytelling environment. I always felt like they wasted their story missions. There were really, really good campaigns where we never went back and fought. Um, what was the boss fight that I always got? Panoptes. I believe that's how you say it. There was there was a DLC that the, the campaign crescendoed with the Panoptes fight. And it's like, then that's it. One time and it's over. Well, three if you do it with every Guardian. It's like, why wouldn't you get more capital out of that? That was a cool engagement. That was a cool uh, fight. Some of those missions were pretty dope. So when they got to the point where they're like, oh, that every week you're going to go back into this environment and replay it and reuse it and get a new story beat and get new lore. I thought that was awesome. I thought that was a really, really great way to tell the story. You got a little bit of Eris every week. There, they, they, That was a smart play. That's all well and good, but I don't see why we can't just have Cade and Holiday instead. Those are the characters I invested Affinity into. I mean, I don't know. It might have been the voice acting, right? They couldn't get Fillion. They had to get, oh, what's his stinking name? The other uber-talented guy. They got him to do Cade, you know, and sound like Nolan North. Um... So to me, it's like, okay, we don't know why they had to make that decision, but I still thought it was fine. Anna Bray is confirmed to have done messed up experiments in her past life, yet nobody blinks when she shows up for sympathy. Amy got banned before it. Season of the Haunted really helped flesh him out more with facing his past. He was literally haunted by Aldrin before eventually accepting it. 
Killian came back for Final Shape, I thought. Yeah, maybe. Or, I'm sorry, yes, he did. So, maybe, again, that was why they wanted Kate out of the picture. I, I don't know. Maybe they were like, yeah, we don't want to have to have Nolan trying to do his voice that much. I mean, I don't know. Nathan claimed he never got a call to come back. It was very strange. That is really strange. That's kind of how they did it with Season of the Haunted. Each character had two missions to confront their past. First failed... And then the second succeeded. Eugene is the worst at double posting. <clears throat> Season of the Holland was so much fun. Anna Bray is still sus. Uh, she sees she's not perfect. But she still finds us revolting for using dark. But she's duplicitous. He was supposedly busy in Forsaken. Who knows? He clearly came back. It, like, it, it sounds like they're on good terms if he came back for the final shape. So. Dinklebot was better than Nolan North. I thought North did a fine job. I thought he did a fine job. I don't think you need to... Um, I don't think I, I don't think we need to stick to the original. I, I don't. I think I think Dinklage did a fine job, but I thought Nolan North gave it more of a. It sounded like a personified AI to me more when Nolan North did it. Who's Anna Bray? Is that the Warmind girl? Yeah, you've got the you got Anna and Elsie, right? So <clears throat> she showed up and was stationed on what was it? What was the planet she was stationed on? Was it Mars? Um, and her sister is the Stranger, right? Elsie Bray is basically the Stranger, isn't she? I'm trying to remember all the different names and all the different theories that I had. One of them, yeah, the stranger. The stranger, <clears throat> as far as I know, knows how to time she knows how to time travel. And I always thought it would have been super cool if the the first time we meet her and she's like, I don't have time to explain why I don't have time to explain. Um, I always thought it would be cool for the moment that she like touches your ear or something. And she's like, she's like, she's like cut the engines and da, 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 da. And I forget the line. And then she disappears. I always thought it'd been really cool if she was talking to us when she said that. So she's talking to past us. She's like, I don't have time to explain why I don't have time to explain. And then when she leaves, she's like, yeah, da 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 like, And we're the ones she's talking to in the future. I always thought that would have been cool to, to tie that together somehow. Elsie is actually in a time loop. She keeps trying and failing to stop the world from ending. What's the point? Doesn't she come from a future where we lost and turn evil? Yeah, she's trying to prevent it. Somehow. Season of the Seraph will forever be my favorite, but saddest season. I've always loved the lore of the Warmind Rasputin. He finally comes back, talked to us, and then had to sacrifice himself. Uh, Elsie doesn't know how to time travel. She resets to a checkpoint in the timeline when she dies. Oh, is that what she's doing? Hmm. That'd be very tenant, Lono. I was working for myself the whole time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. Time is a flat circle, bro. It's a flat circle. I would bet they tie that together before the end would be very cool to tie to the end of D1 to the end of the Dark Light Saga. Yeah, just that line would be cool to see it connect. You know, all of it come full circle and connect. (laughs) 
How does that guy do that? So to me and away from me. Yeah, it's not hard. Thought about there's a video that went viral of a guy doing that. He was making oh, it's hard. I just did it all. I saw myself on camera and I messed it up. You take one finger and you go toward yourself and one needs to go away from yourself. You have to you have to oh I mess as soon as I look at the camera I mess it up. They got lazy and didn't plan or want to plan better Seraph ending, so they bootstrapped a cliche ending. I don't even remember what happened then. I really, really don't. Remember that public event being so annoying. Elsie has the totems checkpoint. <laughs> The freaking totem checkpoint. Oh my gosh. So funny. How like the the community just universally was like, forget that opener, dude. Oh, Seraph happened after your ban? It did? They killed Rasputin off? You weren't around for Seraph. It was at the end of Witch Queen. Oh... I feel like I remember seeing pictures of the weapons. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember seeing some of this stuff. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. A lot of it kind of. It all, honestly, the, the weapons remind me of LC and Anna Bray. Anna Bray, probably more. You were thinking of Season of the Worthy. Oh, that's what it was called. Gosh, that freaking event was awful. It'd been cooler if we had lost our Dinklage ghost tragically, but then rebooted it as Nolan or something like that. And Nolan is like the young AI version of Dinklage. Huh. I can do that both ways, but I credit Guitar for that. That statement is ambiguous, but I'll let it ride. <laughs> uh, that is hard. I just tried it myself. Yeah, most people just end up doing this and it's like, you're just, you're doing the same thing. I have to mentally tell myself, you know, towards and away and I can do it, but I have to, I have to like, look, I have to like, look past it. I can't think about it. It's like I start it and then I don't, I don't think about it. Almost like it's a, it's, it's this thing. Like I have to start it and then just let it go. Like I can't, I can't think about it. Wasn't your band the season after Rasputin shot those fireworks? I, I don't even remember. It was February of 2021. I don't know what was going on in the game at that time. I don't remember. 2021 is a blur. And 2022 is also a blur. My wife will, um, like memories on Facebook of our kiddos. And we're going on walks and, you know, I, my hair, uh, I cut my hair beginning of 2021, which is funny because people are like, he cut his hair to hide. It's like, no, I, I cut it cause I, all of 2020 didn't get a haircut and looked gross. So I chopped in the beginning of 2021. That was before the rebrand and everything. We were still covering the game and still playing the game. Um, so I'll see pictures even before and after during 2021 and 2022 and I tell my wife I was like I don't remember that like 2021 and 2022 are just a blur just trying to squeeze blood from a stone to survive it was like I don't I don't remember any of it before the raid race no Mm-mm. it was a week or so after season of the chosen launched season of the chosen Again, I just don't remember it. This feels weird, man. Like when your high school friends meet your college friends. Lono talking about Destiny is weird. No one's mentioned that the Lightfall opening and ending cutscenes are the same cutscene, meaning Lightfall was filler in between. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't get to play Vault of Glass. That's right. I want. I was so excited about that coming back. I was like, I was really excited about the King's Fall raid coming back because that was the raid that sort of got me 
the growth and partnership and that was kind of the raid that started it all yeah i was really bummed that i couldn't play i was more bummed about king's fall than vault of glass vault of glass wasn't that special to me um i remember doing that uh, raid with like my friends i wasn't a streamer and only one guy knew how to do it and i thought the content was annoying because of that it was like nobody knew what we were doing we're just going where the guy was telling us and all of his methods were cheese methods um and we would do the same thing with crota oh my gosh i just i hated raids back then Mm. trauma screws with memory yeah like we'll just she'll show me pictures of stuff that we did and places that we went and i'm like i don't remember that like it literally i it, it trips me it trips me out i'm like we did that i was like i don't remember doing that it's just like it's like what it's like two years of my life are like gone like i don't remember any of it i remember getting on the phone with creature every day and i remember getting I would get acne at the end of every day. Like, I would get so stressed out. Like, my forehead would break out. So I had to go to the doctor for that. I remember needing to go to the doctor for my blood pressure as well. That happened after the one raid where we stayed up all night. And the next day, I felt I felt funny. Um, and I remember wanting to quit multiple times. Like, I would storm out of the house... To go do something and I would tell my wife I was like I just want to quit <laughs> but it wasn't an option it was like gotta pay the bills man got a family depending on me so I just had to keep going that's all I remember I don't, I don't really remember anything else so when people start talking about this season or that season or you miss out on this or you miss out on that I'm like I I miss out on a lot. <laughs> I miss out on memories. Like, my brain doesn't remember any of it. You got Gallahorn the first week of Vog. Your team hated you, probably. <laughs> yeah, it was the Deepstone 24 hour stream. Um, the next day, my chest felt funny and my blood pressure was up. And so I went to the hospital and there was nothing wrong with me everything was fine everything checked out and the cardiologist was like I've never seen anything like this he's like you're too young and your arteries and heart are way too healthy he's like none of this makes any sense he's like it just it was something stress induced I like yeah (laughs) I'm going through a lot of that right now you know (laughs) Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit of stress and anxiety the last six months. It was like the la- the second half of 2020. Mm-mm-mm. You got banned during the same time period as my father passing away and having to handle his estate and watching you deal with life while I did. I felt worse for you some days, honestly. Wow. That's kind of deep. Panic attack. Um, no. So the way my cardiologist has explained it is, um, I'm still on blood pressure medication because I believe I still, uh, put a lot on myself internally and mentally doing this. And there's still a lot of internal fighting and, and wanting to justify myself and, you know, be, um, vindicated or whatever that's still present you know at some level and so i still think there's a level of uh anxiety that's there but the way my cardiologist explained it is he's like i've had people in your hemisphere of blood pressure where it's not life-threatening it's just high so you take some medicine to curb it down it's better for your health it's better for your longevity of life right to not be like you know elevated every day And he said that he's consistently had men, especially, retire, and then they don't need the medication anymore. So, yeah. I've been been half-dosing for a while. I don't seem to need it as much. So... Yeah. Yeah. So... 
happy to not seemingly need it as much, but still need it in in general. Um, uh, oh, Dauntless Gaming, I appreciate the DM. I would say I'm probably in one of the sweetest, strongest seasons of my life. And it's a work in progress. Um, if you're diabetic. Yeah, they checked all that. They checked everything. They take tons of blood when you have issues like that. And basically, the conclusion they came to is it's stress and anxiety. Funny enough, ever since then, my stress and anxiety has gone down because the business is just in a better place and then I'm in a better headspace through therapy and my own spiritual journey and you can literally on an app that tracks it for me you can see my blood pressure come down and like then it like maintains like a healthy level you can see when it started to happen it's quite literally in conjunction with the business like eerily in conjunction with the business um but yeah to answer your question dauntless you said he sent a dm in discord um, it's a work in progress. Like I still am really a huge, a huge emphasis of my journey right now is I just want to be more self-controlled, a man of wisdom. I think all of that's difficult when you're in view of the public and like you get irritated or flippant with somebody. And then that's like this microcosmic example of like, Oh, look at this guy. He's not nice. He's unkind. Uh, and the average person is going to have moments like that throughout the day, right? They stub their toe, they get stuck in traffic, their boss ticks them off, so they like rant about it to their spouse or whatever, and they get really angry and they say nasty things. Um, that's really, really hard to not always feel like, yep, yeah, I'm just totally failing to be like the man that I want to be in this environment, right? This, this environment chisels away at you every day. Every single day, somebody is making a video or clipping or hurling hate at you. Um, and that's always like, that's always like getting kicked in a wound that hasn't healed because it's like, I've been through like such a larger scale of public attack that every single time it happens, even like at a small level, it's like super activating and like, you feel like, oh my gosh, you know, your body doesn't know that you're not under threat. Um, like my blood pressure has been elevated again this last week because I've sort of been targeted again by a video and by lies and falsehood about stuff that I say in stream that gets completely misrepresented. And my body doesn't know that I'm fine. Like my brain knows I'm like, I'm fine. But my body thinks, uh oh, we're getting attacked again. We're under threat. Adrenaline, blood pressure. You know, it all goes up again. So, just continuing to train myself and self-talk and think big picture. And, you know, the prudent man ignores the insult. Like, I always try to say that to myself. The prudent man ignores the insult. Because the prudent man has his eye on the future, not on, you know, pettiness and squabbles and fighting and insults. So... Your body thinks you're being chased by a gang of snakes for the 2,432nd day in a row. Right. Yo, Big Fesh. Thank you for 26 months, dude. Welcome back, Big Fesh. If you guys are paying for your own membership, you're going to want to double check. When you renew and it says that you're at a gifted membership, that's the $5 membership. The $6 membership is the full membership. We do that so that we can give more to the people who pay, and then the gifteds get the sample. So, do you know about grounding exercises? Very loosely, yes. Um, so, your spiritual well-being means a lot more to think than your uh, than you think to your health. Oh, for sure, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yo, Ryan Hayer, welcome back, dude. Thirty-one months in a VIP, man. I appreciate it. Uh, but again, to come back to answer your question, Dauntless, it's just a work in progress, you know. Am I, you know, wiser and kinder than I was a year ago? Am I giving my, you know, my children more attention? Am I, you know, my leading well? Am I being, you know, 
am I doing all the things that I ought to be doing? And I feel like I am. Um, but that's the beauty of never arriving is that you've always got more to do and more to work on. Not in a way of, oh, I'm jacked up and I'll never be, I'll never be complete or anything like that. But it's like, no, I'm better, but can always be better than I am right now. Like if I can say that, that I'm better than I was a year ago, but I can still be better than I am right now. I think that's the perspective. That's like the balanced perspective that I try to keep. Um, thing grounds easy. He talks to me daily. Um, yeah. Your body and brain has a hard time differentiating between smoke and fire. Like, is this an actual fire and should I be alarmed or is it just a smoke that'll pass soon? Yes. And because it's, I've explained it to my therapist a couple times. I mean, it's post-traumatic stress symptoms is basically what it is. Like your body's like, what's happening? And you're like, nothing's happening. You're fine. It's just an idiot on Twitter or it's just another hate video. Who the frick cares? Like at this point, what, how many videos, you know, can possibly be made? You know, it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything ultimately. Um, but your body is like, what's going on? You know, here we go again. Yo, what's good, Jimifert? How are you? The 4F response is lower than the frontal cortex, so CBT is sometimes ineffective. Uh, Sometimes the best thing to do is feel the ground under your feet or touch a surface or name things. Yeah, the one that I'm familiar with is naming things. You look around you and you say, that is a lamp, that is a tree, that is a window. Like, you bring yourself into the present because ultimately you know that level of anxiety is living in a fake future that you think might be happening or coming instead of just living in the present so it's tough <laughs> it's really tough i think he meant to put cbd I recently played Forbidden West on PC at launch. I loved it. Given Lance's tragic passing, how do you think they'll deal with Silent's character in Horizon 3? Um, I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, they could... He's going off to do something. And he did voice work, I believe, for Horizon, but I believe his final voice work was for the DLC. Um... So I don't I don't know if they could basically say he went to do this thing and he died and maybe Aloy finds some recordings there maybe they're able to do maybe they're able to get permission from the family to honor him and to try to do his voice with some AI and just have some recordings that he leaves behind for Aloy um, and then she finishes his work like that could be a really good setting for the third game that he finally tells her some some he finally kind of levels with her and no more smoke and mirrors no more double talk no more lies and leaves some recordings to be like i'm not gonna make it but you're the only one that can continue this work it's you know and it's vital and that could be a really good springboard for the third game you again would want to honor him and get permission Um, if you're going to do, uh, AI voice work, I think it needs to be something that is, you know, done in a respectable way that it's agreed to like you, the person or the person's, you know, whoever is managing his likeness and trust at this point as a public, you know, figure, whoever's managing that you would want there to be consent that like, yes, you can do this. Yeah. Yeah. Destiny is going to replace him with Keith David. Yeah. He's got a phenomenal voice. Um, he's got one of the best voices in the business. So, they even made a tribute to Lance in Burning Shores. There's an in-game memorial dedicated to him. That's right. Yeah, they did that as well. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's no one day that you'll fight and it might a fart and it might cure cancer. <laughs> that was such. That was one of the best. That was such a good line based on everything that I had been saying like I got all like weird and existential on uh, Friday night 
And yeah, Eugene had an amazing, that was an amazing joke. It was good. Okay, this is something we've been doing for a while, for like the final 20 minutes or so. Uh, and I'm going to try to be better about this as well, uh, doing like members only shorts so that gifted members get little updates and like little reminders about what's going on and what you can do. I'm going to switch the chat to members only. We do this for the final 20 minutes. It's another great opportunity to, to push the member goal a little bit further. Uh, we have switched. The weekly goal is now just that. It's a weekly goal. You don't have to try to get a certain number of the total member count because that's always going up and down and we feel like that's been really unfair. We really analyzed that and thought they're gifting more than enough to hit milestones, but we miss the milestone because overnight we lose members because that's just the natural way of things. So now this week's goal is just 300 members and you've already got 60 members to the good. So uh, right now chat is members only and you can treat this as a gaming AMA uh, obviously we're getting a little bit more personal that tends to happen when we talk destiny and that's fine I'm okay with it I don't feel like anybody's been invasive or cross any lines I am I'm pretty much an open book about that stuff I've never um, shied away from you know people wanting to talk to me about it you know obviously back then I did like podcasts about it with um you know, Andrew Schwab and Gothics the one time. Um, and so, yeah, it's not like this front and center thing that I want to be like featured on, you know, shows and channels for. I'd rather just talk about games. Um, but, you know, some of you have been kind to check in. Um, I appreciate that. I do. Um, I've got people here that are here every day that check in. I've got an amazing wife and great, you know, great couple of kids that are just growing and they're freaking smart they're reading my daughter's going to be more well read than me by the time she's able to drive i think at the rate that she reads right now um so i appreciate it i do um i feel like we're you know we i am in a great place you know family and marriage and all that's in a great place personal life's just been just a real sweet time lately good stuff good memories and more on the more on the horizon so why am i here every day yeah no one really knows uh no one no one really truly knows bro (laughs) the new p86 is amazing it is it is i went down and hung out with andrew when they did their big debut concert it was just awesome got to hang out with him a bunch got to hang out with the band a bunch it was dope it was really really cool I appreciate the Destiny talk. Uh, I don't get to talk to my friends about it anymore because they all quit, so it's fun and nostalgic kind of way. Yeah, you know, a lot of people moved on. I think that that's natural, you know? I don't think that there's... I don't think there's a way to keep that from happening, you know? I don't think there's a way to keep that from happening. I think that that is the natural course of reality itself and certainly the natural course of, of gaming that collective collective communal attention is not eternally sustainable I don't think well at least not in the gaming world it's not do you think that internet speed increase is what was needed to make cloud gaming more viable I mean I watched the short that you guys put in the discord about that I don't what is that about They've. I'm not hearing about that. I'm not getting updates from my ISPs about like, hey, there's this new technology and we can increase everyone's bandwidth and still use the old infrastructure. Like, if they can actually do that, then the question wouldn't just be, can you increase the speed? It's that, can you have consistency? Right? You can give me really fast speed right now on my cable line. But I don't use my cable to stream. I use my cable to watch movies and download games and play games online because it's not as stable. It goes up and down. So if they somehow have figured out how to get way more speed out of existing lines and infrastructure, that is, yes, 100% necessary for cloud gaming to have a future. But will it be consistent is my question and what what do they do how they figure this out you know 
the worst part is going back to something that your friends have moved on from you begin to reflect on the fond memories and wish you could relive them I might be the only one well maybe I'm not maybe that's stupid to say it that way not the only one I'm one of the only people that doesn't want to do that I wouldn't want to relive a fond memory because it wouldn't be the same like once it's it's like rewatching a movie when you know all the twists and turns are coming like you enjoy it but not not to the same like the potency of certain things isn't as strong like if all of a sudden I was reliving a fond memory and I I knew everything that I know now I, I don't know if it would feel as fond anymore you have fiber no there's no fiber in our neighborhood Stability is infinitely more important than pure speed. Right. 120 times faster is from what I understand. So consistency at that point wouldn't be an issue. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. Giving me way more speed, if that speed fluctuates, that's going to be an issue. That's going to cause the the game and latency and all those things to happen. Cloud gaming is fine on current speeds. It's the stability and latency of lines. But yeah, but it's all, it's so much more complicated than that though too. And I'm not saying that you're, you're, you're oversimplifying it, but like, let's say you have a super great stable fiber connection and it's, it's just unwavering. That doesn't really matter if you get routed through a bad, you know, bad infrastructure to get to wherever the cloud server stack is located. Right? Like, you could have the most stable connection in the world, then it's crazy fast, and you get bad routed. You get, I mean, you get poor, poorly routed. You're, you're going to be like, I don't understand. My, my internet's great, and all of my services run great, but when I try to cloud game, I have all these problems. And you could talk to somebody with slower internet that has a better experience to you than you because they're routed better. You can have five hops between your house and the data center. If one of them is bad, the experience is bad. And there's no way for the consumer to know that. Like, this is a huge barrier for cloud gaming. I continue to tell people that. Cloud gaming is a concept, and as far as the technology is concerned, that's, that's awesome. What a great thing. What are you going to do with the infrastructure? Because it isn't there, especially in America. We need server farms nearby. Laws of physics still apply. That's exactly right. It's exactly right. That's always going to be a condition that makes this sort of thing difficult. Always. Because the consumer will have no idea. That Number one, even a sophisticated consumer won't be able to narrow down the problem. They'll just know... All of my stuff's running correctly. All of my speed tests are running well, and I am not getting a good experience. So even a more sophisticated consumer won't be able to fix it or even maybe diagnose it. Think about everybody else who's below that line of sophistication. They don't have a clue what a dropped packet is. They don't have a clue what you mean by the location of the data center. All they know is I connect to the internet. The internet is good. Everything is working. Cloud gaming runs poorly. They're not going to have a clue as to like who the issue is. All they're going to do is blame the cloud the, the, the cloud service. Think of it this way. Imagine turning on your smart TV right now. It's plugged into your internet and Netflix is running great and Disney Plus is running great and you switch on Amazon Prime and it's stuttering, buffering, and messing up. What are you going to say when that happens? You're going to say, Amazon must be having a problem. My other services are running fine. Amazon's having some type of an issue. So... If you're playing video games on the internet and watching movies on the internet and surfing on your phone and doing whatever it is that you're doing and then you go to cloud game and the cloud gaming runs poorly, you are going to basically say what the person said about Amazon. You're going to say, something's wrong with this cloud gaming thing. And that's going to be really hard to get that person to ever do that again because they're like, oh, I've tried that cloud gaming thing and it's terrible and it runs poorly, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's hard to win people back when they've had a negative experience on their first exposure. Yo, what's good, Rachel? My Netflix works great, and I have a gig down. Why isn't this working? 
the average consumer isn't going to go beyond that logical question. And it's a fair question. It's totally fair. You're telling me I can stream video games? Awesome. Why isn't it working? <laughs> I got all these streaming services working just fine. So, you know, the average consumer, you're going to it's just going to be really hard to get a, a cloud gaming adoption rate that you know, that hits the same saturation that you get from like traditional gaming experiences on a PC or a console. This idea of like, well, hardware is going to be a thing of the past and we're just all going to cloud game. Uh my children's children might do that. I'm not. I don't think I'm going to see a world where hardware disappears and we're all just cloud gaming. It's going to take way too long to get the infrastructure where it needs to get. Even a technological breakthrough. The the server, you know, the the, the, the data center distribution and all that. I just, I think you're always going to be you know these hardware companies that are developing GPUs and CPUs they're 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 on they're on an upward growth trajectory they're not suddenly going to stop doing that there's a there's a market for it scientists somehow made the internet go 4.5 million times faster uk researchers created a lightning fast way to transmit data in previously untouched wavelengths breaking a world record Right, and that's a thing where they can, like, use old infrastructure, right, to do it. I don't know. Your descendants? No, it wouldn't surprise me if my grandchildren are are living in a world where you can, you can do everything in the cloud and it would be insanely fast and work great. They won't think of, they won't think of technology in the way that we think of technology. So right now, we see technology as something that we integrate into our life. They will see technology as integrated into reality itself. I believe that we're already seeing that. The generation behind is already viewing tech in a different way than the way that we view tech. We view technology as something that can be integrated into our life, and we engage with it. And now the generations behind us are fully integrating with tech, and they're becoming more mechanistic. And I believe there will come a time where, like, my grandchildren or my grandchildren's children will see technology as a part of the fabric of reality the same way they look at, like, a tree. Tech will just be woven into reality itself. It will no, it will no longer be an otherly thing. That's what I think. That gets a little philosophical and it gets into like anthropology a little bit, but I think that's where things are headed. The adoption and integration rate at this point, the way that people use it, it's it's clear. I think it's clear that's what that's that's where things are going. Marathon will hold back Destiny 3 for a while. Um, I don't think so. I think Marathon's a separate team. I think Marathon's going to struggle. I don't think Marathon's going to require all of Bungie to work on it. Like a thousand plus employees is not working on, is not working on, uh, Marathon. I also don't know if Marathon's going to make it either. They're taking a big gamble. Big, 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 big gamble. I'm thinking 20 years, not grandkids. If the hardware gets lightweight enough that a server farm fits in a phone booth, you can put phone booths everywhere. And you can Uberify it, right, Zuby? Couldn't you? Couldn't the companies approach, you know, a person and say, hey, we've analyzed infrastructure. Your property is perfect for this and we'll pay you this much to build it and then you can get this much per month or something like they would uberify it like how like basically you crowdsource yeah you could crowdsource the tech like the server the server and data centers like because you need land you need places to put them and they would need to be conveniently located obviously you could put them in like you know, industrial parks or places that in the city that would would be beneficial, but I would think you'd want to get them down into like neighborhood level. <clears throat> That'd be a selling point, right? You call up the internet company and they're like, "Yeah, 
One of our major data centers for cloud-based services is located in your neighborhood. Stuff like that. I hope D3 is a full reset and we have the option to also play as light and dark bearing fallen and or cabal, but also like to not play. So maybe they could make it not interesting. That would be nice. You don't, you don't want to play what's good feed. See in the chat mesh networks. Yeah. Like a, like a citywide mesh network sort of, yeah. know. those grandkids will be fighting Skynet. That's probably true. I should be training my kids right now on how to be, you know, military leaders of the future. (laughs) Guys, in about eight minutes, we're going to shift gears and I am going to be talking about uh, Star Wars Outlaws with Kirk and basically asking the question, why is this game getting so much hate all of a sudden? It is remarkable. Um, how quickly this isn't like kill the justice league where it's first outing. It was sort of hated from the beginning. This is like they were a showstopper last year and now everyone is just shredding them. I have a theory about what's going on. Um, cause some of the criticisms like legitimate. Some of it, I think I have some theories about what exactly uh, has led to this sharp, sharp shift in uh, in criticism for the game. Uh, okay, there we go. Getting this scheduled, scheduled, done. Oh, you'd like to not play. Okay. But I have zero willpower. Good luck. I have the answer. I know what the answer is. I didn't know that you had no willpower. That's, that is useful information. <laughs> hey, I need you to do this thing and project for me. And uh, I need it tomorrow. <laughs> I need it right now. You have no willpower, so you must you must do this. Them hiding the job of the hut quest behind a paywall probably wasn't the best idea. That's certainly going to be a topic because Kirk found that this morning. Um, or, you know, he, he saw it in the timeline or whatever. Absolutely zero. Um, okay. Let me change the thumbnail on the Destiny stream so that it doesn't show us live. I'm going to get Kirk on the line here. How was a stream? Didn't expect Destiny topic, to be honest, uh, but glad you did it. My therapist is somewhere like hold strong, Rachel. No, no, just give in. It's so much easier. <laughs> just play. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. That is scheduled. That is also scheduled. Okay. Um, okay. Dev sure know how to rain on the warm and fuzzies. Yeah, teeny bit. <laughs> teeny bit. They're really good at being like, hey, the, the stupid stuff that people don't like, why don't I think we should do more of that. Uh, did I put that in the gaming news playlist? Is it just not, or is it just not showing? Oh, there it is. Okay. Okie dokie. Okay. Close that. Yeah, that's that's part of it, Rachel. That's certainly part of it, but it's also not the full story. Like, you are correct, and you're also not correct, which is which is the way. This is the way. Oh, where 
is Mr. Kirk the Gamer. There he is. Start the video call. Let me do this. I forget how I do this with... Yeah, there we go. Testing, testing. One, two, three. There how we do go. I sound? Um, I'll check that in just a second. I'm going to crop you for... Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm looking up over my... Yeah, that was perfect for the camera. It was real flattering. Well, I'm looking at the the Outlaws trailer. I went back and watched the gameplay one. Do you have that ready to pull up, the, uh, the one from last year? Like, the first one ever? Yeah, the one that everyone liked? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I want to show... I want to I wanna talk about, like, a specific part of that, because I feel like it showcased some really good lighting and then if you were to swap to the new one it's like n all that's gone none of that's there anymore so that might be cool for us to look at yeah because it's hard to know yeah is one's a pure cinematic and is one engine level right, let me get uh some good good destiny discussion earlier today oh yeah <laughs> love to see it Okay, so we want Star Wars Outlaws trailer. No helium voice today? No, no. I was no. only on April Fools and I think it was uh I think it was my headset playing tricks on me. Oh, I got a mute chrome. Oh no, it's Kirk. No, Stop. that's not the trailer. Sup Kevin, sup Dave. Yep, I'm back like a bad habit. I want the I want the first world trailer. No, this is like the trailer gameplay, that they gameplay, gameplay, gameplay. It's oh, does it? It's got to have gameplay in the title. Official gameplay walkthrough is that it? Probably. It's all on Ubisoft. Oh, is there a version of this that isn't Letterbox? Freaking. Star Wars Outlaws gameplay trailer. I just I want one that isn't letterbox. I think I think that's just how they did it, Lono. Like that's just how they showed it. Is that the game? It's not, right? It no, I don't think the game is gonna be letterbox. Okay, let's see if PlayStations is like that. Hmm. Okay, cool. PlayStation has one that's not Letterbox. Okay, it's such a it, it's such a pain in the rear end to c capture it we'll when it's like that. It Sub Stone Spire. Stone Spire. I don't know if we have a leaderboard for Gifteds, but you've got to be got to be somewhere on there. He does it. He goes in, dude. Yeah. What's up, Pete of Town? Ravenstorm. And I, Hex, I do need to get some sun. It's about that time of year, so I'm going to get outside. Okay. I have a ring light. I, I, I don't think it makes me look better. Oh, and let me change this image. Creature got me a new image for today. There we go. Are we still going with looks rough? Uh, I went with why all the hate. Oh, God. Maybe. Uh, there's literally videos titled Star Wars Outlaws. Everyone hates it. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> yeah, but looks rough. Looks rough was such a slam dunk before. Yeah, but it in, it it was it encapsulated our viewpoint. Looks rough doesn't doesn't. There's so much more than that this time around. Like it's sure. it's just it's stacked up. I think originally I was agreeing with you. Like okay, that's a great POV, but the, it's stacked up over the weekend. It was like now it's like full blown hate. Like the down votes are terrible, you know, because the like ratio. I didn't see what you have to say. Um, what was that? What was probably it? be a lighter day on talking for me actually. So, chat. Yeah. If you were gonna leave because you were worried I was gonna talk the whole time. 
don't, I might actually let Len Lono get a word in today. <laughs> All right. I'm going to quickly run upstairs, stretch, and use the restroom. And then you guys can talk to Kirk for a little bit. And uh, Dad, how, how, we, how are we feeling about Destiny? I, I, was a, I was a Destiny 1 player way back in the day. And uh, hot take, but when Taken King came out, it kind of changed the game into an MMO, and I didn't really like it. I, I was sort of, I was, I was playing it back in 2014 when like, it was like one of the best games you could possibly play on console. Like, I feel like it captured that magic that people experience with like the Halo games. And, um, yeah, it, it's completely shifted into an MMO, which it needed to do. Like, Taken King brought it to a place and a genre that it, that it needed to fully commit to. But it, it, it was when I realized that, like, oh, this game isn't for me anymore. And then I got that back with Rise of Iron, but that was the last time that really Destiny felt like it was, like, my type of game. Yeah, the, the Vanilla Destiny did have more of a grounded Halo vibe that I really enjoyed. Seems like we lost all the all the Destiny folks, though. There were about 300 of them hanging out. Yeah, maybe not, Scott. Scott. Maybe not. You might be right on that one. What what was my type of game, Zubair? Oh God, um, I don't know. I liked I liked RPGs a lot. I think, like I I was really into Lords of the Fallen, the first one when it came out. Um, and I even platinum that game, and it wasn't a very good game, but it was like one of the only next gen games, just in general. Um. That year, the first, the launch year of the PS4, I primarily played Assassin's Creed Black Flag, which was amazing. Amazing game. So maybe that's why I like Skull and Bones so much. But I, I don't really need to be an assassin to like that. Like, I like the, I like the pirating and the ship combat anyway. And it's been so long since, I mean, I haven't played Black Flag since then, really. Um, I played Lords of the Fallen. I platinum that game. Again, because there wasn't anything else out. Like, this is, guys, this is a time when, for console gaming, like, Bound by Flame, one of, like, the worst performing RPGs ever, and by performing, I mean performance on, on console, um, was, like, one of the only RPGs to play. Like, you gotta remember, like, PS3 games just weren't on PlayStation 4, like, at all. So, unless they ported it over, like they did with Dishonored and... Sleeping Dogs and, and some other games, like, with a definitive edition, it, you just couldn't play it. Like, you couldn't play Far Cry 3 on PS4. It was crazy. And uh, I also played a lot of Evil Within. Evil Within was a great game for 2014. Like, that game was ahead of its time. Or reminiscent of Resident Evil 4, however you want to see it. Was Alien Isolation 2014, Jaggy? If it was, I think that game was, like, 2016. Let's test my gaming knowledge here. 2014. I am wrong. God, that game was ahead of its time. Wow. When did Outlast come out? Outlast Trials. I've I've put about um, 50 hours into Outlast Trials, and I can't stop playing it. It's one of the best PvE games I've played probably, I don't want to say ever, but in a long time. God, it's 10 out of 10 on Steam. That's crazy. 
Outlast Trials is 10 out of 10 on Steam, guys. Is that accurate? Overwhelmingly positive. That's crazy. If somebody had told me that this game was going to be received exceptionally poorly, Outlast Trials, I would have believed them wholeheartedly. That just seems like the type of game that would that would plummet. It's real good. It's a fun time. All right. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, guys. I'm going to spam a link in chat. That's where we're headed. Also, let's just check where we are. Let's get 24 more likes on this Destiny video, man. There's a lot of you still hanging out if you're lurking. As we shift gears here, just do that. Send this video off nice and strong with a like. Uh, you can also check out the full monologue, which we, do, we did separately as an upload today. We're going to continue doing that. It'll be a little less confusing tomorrow because I think you'll just see the premiere and that'll sort of serve as the entrance to the live show. I, th- I confused people a little bit today because they saw both things scheduled. So that I'm was gonna... that was confusing. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, because I, I clicked on the, the 50 minute video at first and then it ended and I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, after a week or two, people will get accustomed to it and they'll understand like that's okay. now going to be the intro to the live show. It'll just take a minute. So I got you. Quickly, 19 more likes, and then when you're done smashing like, you can click the link in chat. I'll also redirect you. I'll be quiet here for, like, a second, and then we will get into... Um, and I won't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get, we'll get into the episode. Thanks so much for checking out. Another video where I sit down every week with my man Kirk from What's New Video Games. And if you want to check out his content and his reviews and guides, the link in description below, you can click on his name. We wanted to talk about, which was just, we're being brave here. There's a lot of hate with Star Wars Outlaws all of a sudden. And uh, it was originally going to be a video just about sort of does the appearance not look as good as it used to, but it's gotten even worse as pricing and incentive to buy and pre-order has kind of turned into a bit of a mess. So I'm going to end the previous stream. I did talk about Destiny 3. I'm going to end that stream and redirect people over. If you missed my monologue, that's uploaded. Or if you want to see the live discussion, that's available as well. And thanks for